All right, good morning. So today we're going to be discussing about the uh, t-test. And maybe if my pen would work, the t-test. There we go. For means. Now, the t-test for means is, as you know, very similar to the z-test. And I say as you know because think about this back in chapter seven in 243. What did you do? You did, a, you did a t intervals and z intervals. And really, what was the difference? Well, the difference really is if sigma is known, you can use the z test anytime, in theory. Okay? And, and that's true to a point, but here's the deal in real world, it's almost never known. Almost never. And so, if it's never known, then the question really comes down to sample size. And if n is bigger than or equal to 30, uh, the z test. Or the z interval in that case, right? That was the z interval. And this is the same, same exact relationship. And then, of course, if no, then, of course, it's the t test. Oops. And so that is where we're going to be at today. Now, again, almost never do you know sigma. It's just, it's not a thing. It, if you knew sigma, then you... I mean, how do you know the population, the actual population standard deviation, and you don't know the actual population mean? You with me on this? That's weird. And so, a lot of times it'll show up in a book situation where it does, it'll straight up say to you, the standard deviation of the population is blah. All right? Well, they're trying to scream at you, hey, use a z-test here. But 99.9 .9 or more percent of the time, you won't know that. And so, really, it comes down to a sample size issue. Okay, and so today that's what we're going to be working on. Uh, very straightforward stuff, you know. It'll, again, it'll start off with somebody. So let's say Michelle. Uh, and again, Michelle works in this industry. Whatever it is, I'm going to write here. I don't even know exactly. Uh, she runs a Saturday market shop, yes. And so she feels like that more people are coming by Saturday market. Feels like more folks are coming. Saturday market. Now, notice I wouldn't do this study because I've been to Saturday market um, like twice in my life, and it's just not a thing I do. But Michelle apparently cares. I don't know. She works with security there. She runs a shop there. I don't know, but she's got a dog in a fight, and she and she feels that she there's some reason she wants to know this. All right, especially if she worked for like the Portland Police Department. Do we need to have more people? You know you know, there or in the neighborhood to keep an eye on what's going on or security or whatever. It, it, there's some reason she needs to know this, okay? And so, you know, it used to be, I don't know, it used to be uh, you would average a thousand people a day. Listen, I just made that up. It's not important. Okay? And, you know, because she used to, again, she's in charge. She kept track of this stuff. So she samples, check it out now, samples, uh, you know, 12 Saturdays, or just, as uh, you say, just say 12 days, right? Okay. Hey, that's way less than 30. You're right. Boom. Boom. So we found that the sample mean... Well, she says, like, more people are coming. So, I don't know, 1,150 people. And she found that the standard deviation of that sample was 200 people. And so, is at alpha equals, and then again, we have to tell you an alpha value, is she correct? Now, what do you mean, is she correct? Well, she, you know, she made a claim. And again, I, I hate this about the Bloomin book. And, but whatever, we're going to use that connected math homework, which I like in some regards in that A, I don't have to grade it. <laughs> B, you get instant feedback, which is pretty cool. But in that homework, there, there's a drop-down box where they say, oh, this was the claim. This was not the claim. Oh, for crying out loud. So it's not that difficult, but here's the deal. I heard this. When I heard Michelle discussing this in the process, I heard it was greater than 1,200, or I mean rather 1,000. Greater than what it used to be. It used to be a thousand, and it has increased. It's gotten bigger. It's whatever you want to say. And again, a variety of ways to say that has gotten bigger, has increased. There's more. Anyway, that's a greater than only. Well, the opposite of that is this guy right here. By the way, some books 
which annoys me greatly. I mean, wow, does it annoy me greatly. Some books will make a big deal about putting an equal sign always up here and then greater than. Hmm. These guys should be opposite signs of one another. Okay, just be aware of that. The Blumen book is pretty good about it. And I'm going to show you an example right now of the homework. Maybe I am. No, that's the wrong deal. Uh, let me pause for a jiffy while I find it. All right. So here we go. And maybe. And you will be able to enroll in this. And we'll talk about how to start that and whatnot. But here's the homework. I just want to like just do one here just for fun. I'm going to go into a preview one just for fun. And I just want to show you how the book does these sort of things, which is a little, it's okay, it's not hard, but just be aware of that, uh, that it's a little goofy at times. So it's 8.1. Okay, this will be a Z test on all these guys. Just be aware. Here's 8.2. This will be a T test. You know. But you're like, blah, 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 blah. The number of pages is less than 40. You see that? Less than. So mu is less than 40. See that right there? And then, of course, this guy up here on top is the opposite of that. So, see right here? Now, your book is, this stupid homework is that way. Okay? Now, in my mind, that, that it shouldn't be that way. Okay? See, what I was taught, and the way I've always taught it and believe it, is this should be greater than or equal to, this is the less than. But in either case, this one down here is always not equal to. Okay? So, if I had written this book, you wouldn't see it that way. Most books, a lot of books don't do it that way. But just be aware of that. Now, what did, what did this person claim? He claimed it was less than. So what they want you to do here is put th this is the claim and this is not the claim. That's very annoying to me. Okay? But, uh, this is, and this is a one-tailed test. Okay? That's very annoying, but that's how the, that's what they want you to do it. And so just be aware of that when you go do your answers. So back over here to this deal. Again, I'm going to always write mine thusly. I think that to me is, that is the way that it used to be always taught. And now people are starting to, some books are starting to slide that equals in right there. And I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like it at all. So we're just going to leave it like this. Now, be aware of that. So T is equal to, and so it's going to be 1150 minus 1000. Notice that if this comes out to be a negative, well, you screwed up. But why would Michelle ever test that situation if it was so close to a thousand? You know, if, if the true mean was close to a thousand, it's quite possible that on a, a sample of 12 or 15 or 100 days or whatever, it's possible that you could get an average that was less than a thousand. But the whole reason that Michelle's doing this test is because she has an, an inkling, a clue or something, you know, some, some, some data that she's kind of kept track of in her head perhaps. That, that it's actually more than a thousand and she's not shocked when her sample average is bigger than a thousand at all okay because you know she's pretty pretty down with this has to end up being you know bigger than a thousand I mean it, that's why she's doing the test if she wasn't if she didn't think it was bigger than the test she wouldn't be doing it. all right so I'm gonna whip out the old calculator here and I'm gonna do parentheses 1150 minus 1,000 divided by parentheses 200 divided by the square root of 12. And, oh, dummy. There we go. I get 2.59. So I get a Z score of 2.59. A T score, rather. Okay? Now, just like before, We're putting 0.05 over here, and we need a critical value for that. Now, if you have a calculator like this one, it can be done by, you know, going to the stats list editor. Come on, give it to me. There we go. And in the stats list editor, I go to F5, inverse, T, there it is. And so the area is point. 9, 5, because that's area to the left, or area less than. The degrees of freedom is 1 minus n, or n minus 1, rather, so it's 11. And so I get a cutoff score, a critical value, of 1.79. 1.79. 1 
2.79. Now, a person could also get that from the T table, so if you want, you can look it up there as well. Hey, look where we are. We are out in Freakville. We are out there, and it's weird, but it's only weird if H0 is true. So because it's out there, we're going to say, hey, look, we're rejecting H0, which means that the average number of people actually average number of numbers that's a good one Jay average number of people has increased significantly okay now if you want to throw some blurp in there about Michelle was correct more power to you Okay, that's that's totally fine. Um, you can put that in there. Michelle, Michelle, reject H not Michelle is correct in saying that the amount of people that show up at Saturday market <clears throat> has increased significantly. Any of those things are fine, but I'm looking for reject H not and has increased significantly. Those are the things I'm looking for when I grade this. Okay. Now, um, if you don't have a TI 89 or 84 with the inverse on this. You can also do it like this on the calculator, on Excel. T dot inverse, right there, boom. And you can put in 0.95 comma 11, and there's your, crit your cutoff score. Okay, you can also do a T test on this calculator, and I'm totally fine with that too. That's second F6, and the T test is number two. And you will find it is very similar to... Um, the Z test, because who would be shocked by that? Uh, our mean under the null hypothesis was a thousand. It was eleven fifty in our sample, and the standard deviation was two hundred, and twelve was our N, <clears throat> and it was a upper tail test. And you will get a p-value here of 0 0.0123, 0 0.0123. Now remember, if p is less than alpha, we are going to reject. There is a 1.2% uh, chance that I saw what I saw if h naught was true. And we're saying that the lowest probability we'd be okay with is 0 0.05. So because it's less than 0 0.05, we reject h naught. Again, either do it the classical method up here. Or do it the p-value method. Okay, I. It's important to me that you learn both ways because I will test you on both. Um, and if you want to practice both ways, that's cool. But just remember they should match up just fine. Okay. Uh, in Excel, if you wanted to try it in Excel with the p-value method, this is how you do it. So you go equals t dot dist. Okay. And so you notice what it wants to know is this. Okay. It, it wants to know what X is. So our X was 2.59, I think, something like that. And then degrees of freedom was 11. And then 1 means it's a CDF. It's less than or equal to. Now watch what happens when I hit this in. Ah, oh, that's because it's less than. So if I want an upper tail, I'm just going to do 1 minus, you see. <clears throat> and there it is. There's my p-value. Okay. It's a pretty straightforward deal. Once you get the hang of it, Jesus, the same thing every time. Mm-hmm. It is. Um, so let's do another one here. Uh, let's see, uh, Fred. Um, well, what does Fred do? Yeah, I don't know. Fred, uh, Fred believes fewer people are coming to this grocery store. Now notice on this one, I'm not really sure why Michelle only took five days or twelve days. I'm not really sure why this guy Fred is only going to sample a few days, but they are. Okay. Frequently, the reason we have such a small n is because it's it's dangerous to get it. It's expensive. It's there's a lot of reasons. For instance, if you work for Rolls Royce, I don't really think you want to crash test too many Rolls Royces. Okay, it's kind of spendy. Um, if you were some wildlife biologist and you felt like that part of the reason that Siberian tiger is becoming you know hard to find or whatever or you know rare or whatever endangered uh, part of it is because of the sperm counts 
Well, you'd have to go catch a bunch of Siberian tigers and check the sperm count, which sounds very expensive. Sounds very hard to do. It sounds very dangerous. So, if I could get my hands on, you know, four or five, six of them, yeah, I'm going to go with that. Now, I'm not going to try to get a hundred of them because, A, there may not be a hundred of them. And, and B, because I don't want to get killed and, or torn to shreds or what have you. That just seems like a weird thing to have to do, but someone's got to do it. But again, Fred's, Fred's wishing out, you know, he's kind of wishing out on us here. He only wants to, only wants to go sample a few. So, you know, he, in the past, I don't know, would average... I don't know, uh, 30 customers per day. Apparently he is out in the middle of eastern Oregon somewhere. Okay? Uh, again, per day. So, he takes a sample. Of 16 customers. And find uh, you know he gets a sample average of uh, not 16 customers I'm sorry not 16 customers 16 days right so 16 days and he finds that he averages again he thinks he's getting fewer people right it, he only thinks that because he's kind of been keeping track in his mind. The, you know, so if it's like pretty close to 30, he never gets this thought in his head that, I bet it's less than 30. So in his mind, he's going, huh, if I take a sample, what's he expecting? Well, he's expecting something like 26, 27, 25. He's expecting an average that's less than 30. Otherwise, he wouldn't have had the thought to go and run the test. In other words, does that make sense? Now, it may not be significantly less than 30, okay? Like on the, on, uh, you know, which we, we, we'll do one like that in a few minutes. It may not be significantly less, but it may be less. That's why Fred got the idea, at least, okay? And he got a sample deviation of 8. And then let's just do alpha is 0.1 this time, okay? So what I'm hearing is, I'm hearing Fred say, H0, mu, H1, mu, and I'm hearing mu is less than 30. And the opposite, of course, of that is greater than or equal to 30. And Fred said this, so, I mean, if you want to get particular with it, that is what he said. That is his claim, okay? Uh, but, again, I'm not going to make a big deal of that. That's It's not that huge a deal. That's not really what we care about when we're doing these things. Okay? So it's x bar minus mu over sx divided by the square root of 10. See, I can do this one in my head. That's negative 4. Mm -hmm. uh, square root of 16 is 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. I didn't mean to do that, but that's kind of neat when it works out that way, huh? Alrighty then. So, let's do that. Oops. Oh, we shouldn't have done that. Like, oh, for God's sake. Stop it. So a little F5 Rooney. If I'm going to do it the classical method, I'm going to do an inverse T on that. And this is a lower tail test, so I'm only going to put 0.1 in that lower tail. And it wants to know what the degrees of freedom are. Well, that's 15. And I find that my cutoff score is negative 1.34. So if I draw my T, which is goofy looking T, I apologize. This is negative 1.34. Well, look where we are. That's weird, but again, only weird if H0 is true, so we're going to reject H0. And by doing that, what are we saying? Yeah, Fred's right. Fewer people are coming. Uh, in the calculator, and again, I will make videos for this with the TI-8384 as well. 
So don't don't feel panicked about that. We will make the videos for those coming up. Uh, again, my my uh, my laptop, uh, my Surface Pro is dead right now, and it should be back, I think, tomorrow. So I'm pretty happy about that. I miss the old girl. Um, love that thing, the way it writes and stuff. It's pretty sweet. Um, and again, this is a lower tail test. Now, again, once you understand how to do it in 89 and 90, they're all the same basic program. I just get typed in slightly differently. Notice I get a T of negative 2, and I get a p-value of 0 0.03, which is less than 0 0.1. Again, we're rejecting H0. So you can do it over here, too, T dot inverse. Okay, 0.1 comma degrees of freedom is 15. There's my cutoff score equals T dot dist. And our value was negative 2. Degrees of freedom is 15, comma 1. I don't do a 1 minus in front because this is a lower tailed test. And the crowd goes wild. Okay. Now on this next one, um, what I want you to think about is this. is that First of all, keep in mind, Z's and T tests, in terms of how they work, are for all intents and purposes the same. In terms of how you set them up, in terms of everything you do about them, they all are, for all intents and purposes, the same. The only difference is where do I get my cutoff score or which button do I push on the calculator, basically, is what it boils down to. But in terms of the actual thought processes, in terms of setting up this, the test, in terms of finding a cutoff score or a critical value, in terms of uh, you know, what do you do if you're in the critical region or if you're not in a critical region? Uh, you know, it's all the same basic procedure. So don't overthink that too much. All right, so here's the deal. Uh, Velma, uh, uh, thinks, again, because she has some reason to think, that uh, fewer people are coming to book club. So, you know, used to be able, or used to be able to expect, oh, for God's sake, stop it, to expect 10, 15 people. Okay, she samples. This is what we always do. You think something, then you go take a sample. So she samples 10 club meetings. And she gets the following data. Following data. Ooh. Nice. At alpha equal 0.05. Now, is she right? Okay. Uh, so, yeah. You know, she, fewer people, she said, was coming to the book club, right? So, the first thing I noticed is that this is a two tail, uh, one, uh, a lower tail test. Yeah. And she said fewer than 10. So that's what I heard her say. And of course, the opposite of that is this guy. And it's a lower tail. So we're putting 0.05 in this lower tail. We'll go find that cutoff score in a minute. But here is the data from her sample. See, are you just making this up? Yeah. And okay, so what do I do with this data? Well, I take my calculator out, okay, and on the 8384 again, I'll be doing this with 8384 as well. But I'm going to go ahead and punch in the data. So five, ten, eight, eight, oh no, that's 88. That's not that's no bueno. 
eight, eight, nine, seven, six, six, nine, right? And five. You'll do the same thing in your uh, TI-8384. There's a big stat button right here. You go to stats and edit, and you'll put it in the same location. And once we got it in, we're going to go do a test on this. And this time, when it asks me if I have data under the t-test, I'm going to say yes. So I don't have stats this time. I have data. And so my average from the null hypothesis is 10. Now, where is that stuff? Well, it's in list 1. So you need to type it in the first time. After this, it will still be there. So alpha, L, alpha, I, alpha, S, T1. And we have that this is a lower tail test, which is how we have it set up. And then we hit okie dokie. And what you'll find is, is that it does the whole work for you. Notice that in here it tells you, right down here, it tells you that the mean was 7.3. The standard deviation was 1.7. There was 10 of them. If you put all that together, lo and behold, you will get a T of negative 4.8. Okay, furthermore, the p-value is 0. 0.00046, and so clearly you're going to be rejecting H0. Notice that without even doing an inverse T, you know, T's and Z's, the cutoff scores are, quote-unquote, somewhere around 2 or negative 2. 4.8 deviations from the mean, you are rejecting the bejesus out of this thing. Okay, it's not even close. I mean, there will be times when you're like, well, I feel like... I should probably find that critical value because it might be close. This is not one of those times. If you were doing this the classical method, you'd try to do it this way, and the degrees of freedom we said was 9 this time. You will find that the cutoff score is negative 1.89. Again, somewhere around 2, yes? Well, friends, we just got a T of negative 4.28. That's freakish. Okay, so again, what are we doing here? rejecting H0. And by rejecting H0, is Velma right? Yeah, Velma is right. Fewer people are coming. And by the way, when I say fewer, what I mean is what? Significantly fewer people are coming. Okay? That's the game, man. Piece of cake. Now, I will say that, that when you have this figured out, you're like, oh, I wonder if all the other tests are similar to that. Huh. Can I select data? Oh, by God, I can. But see, in this different, be, be aware that the difference here is, is, is that, notice that on the other one, on the t-test, it didn't ask for sigma, did it? Because that's the rule. You don't know sigma, so it just goes ahead and finds SX behind the scenes and uses it. But Z, in theory, you, you know what sigma is. So what happens if I didn't know sigma, or, you know, this sigma? Well, in that case, I'd actually have to do, you know, if I had 30 data points here, I would actually have to then crunch and find out what that sigma was. So well, one thing I can do, of course, is I could come to this one variable statistics under F4, and then, yes, list one, da, 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 that's exactly what I want. And then in, on, you know, in here, it'll tell me, hey, look, there's, a, there's the mean, there's my standard deviation, and from those two things, then I can go back over here to the test, and in the Z test, then under the, underneath of the sigma, I would list, stick in 1.73 or whatever it was, okay? And then it would be exactly 100% the same way. Okay? Again, if I have data... If I have data, then I 99% of the time for sure don't know what the population deviation is. Okay? But again, if I, if I have n bigger than 30, I don't care. But I need to go find that SX first. But then you're saying to yourself, well, if I have to go to all the trouble to find X bar and SX, well, isn't it just as easy to make a T distribution or a Z, either one? Isn't it just as easy to find, like, more likely, I guess it's the Z, um, my point is, if you had 30 data points and you typed them all in, and then you had to find, ah, stop it, 
and you had to find x bar and sx using one variable statistics, isn't it just about as easy to just to go ahead and find the z-score the old-fashioned way? And the answer is, I think it is. Yeah, I do. Um, to me, that's not very helpful. That z-test isn't. But be aware that they are not the only test that you see hiding in here. So as we go out throughout, oops, as we go throughout the rest of the book, we will be using oh one proportion z test, a way two sample z's and t's. That's chapter nine. Two sample proportions. Hey, that's chapter nine as well. This goodness of fit test. That goodness of fit test is something that yeah you can kind of do it that way. I have a better way of doing it. F test, we will be doing it in chapter 9, chapter 10. Uh, kind of we'll be doing that in chapter 10, but not in the calculator. Uh, ooh, chapter 12. Hey, more chapter 12. Okay. Um, however, when we get to some of the other stuff, we'll be using the calculator or the computer for those because I find them, they're just easier to do them on a computer. Uh, I find that it's easier to deal with in that setting. Um, it's, a lot less, it's a lot less messing around and it's a lot easier to try to read, especially for my old eyes. Um, Plus, everything is in front of you all at the same time. With the computer, with the calculator, you have to be scrolling up and down. And where did that little sucker go? It's hiding here. I was here a minute ago. I can't see it. Oh, there it is. Versus Excel, it's on this giant page. All the numbers you need are literally right in front of you. Just pick off the ones you want. Okay? So, again, Z-Test, it's all about that this thing right here. And really, it's all about this. I mean, let's be honest. It's really all about N bigger than or equal to 30. We're using the Z less than 30 we're using the t's okay that's the big takeaway again if you know sigma that's great but again that's pretty much as rare as hen's t so good luck with that